from the front lines of the fight against COVID-19 as I welcome Dr. Rick Pescator, emergency medicine expert. He joins me from Delaware. Uh, we lead the world in this. Your assessment, how do we stand? Larry, we've seen a lot of change over the past few weeks, and every day is much different than the one before. We're in the fight of our lives. There's really no getting around it. But I've been buoyed by what I've seen over the past few days, the dedication and passion of healthcare workers who are uh, fighting the fight of their lives and beginning to turn the tide. Do we need a national strategy or is this state by state? I think that we have had um, some success with a lot of state by state approaches, but there's really no question at this point that a coordinated nationwide strategy that leverages the heterogeneity and the ability of different states to add different uh, parameters to this fight is absolutely critical. Uh, leveraging the power of the federal government and leveraging the uh, powers of all the states combined is certainly what we need right now. What's the situation where you are in New Jersey? I just returned from a string of shifts up in North Jersey, um, right over the river from uh, New York City. And, and I'll tell you, it's like nothing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, rows and rows of intubated patients with, on the breathing tube, on the ventilator, uh, patients who are critically ill everywhere, all over the hospital, doctors, nurses, techs and therapists who are running all over doing everything they can for patients with disease that I'll tell you, defies paradigms of medicine and, and is truly uh, challenging everything we know about medicine. An emergency doctor, being the state of what it is, he has to be pretty well versed in almost every area, doesn't he? Well, as emergency physicians, um, we have the honor and the privilege of seeing the first 15 minutes of all specialties of medicine, seeing people with strokes and seeing people with heart attacks, seeing people with minor injuries and illnesses. It's important to have a, a breadth of knowledge as well as a depth of knowledge. And we have uh, male, female physicians all over the country uh, who are tremendous at what they do and I think making uh, tremendous uh, advances against the disease. What do you make of the idea of an anti-malaria drug? You know, hydroxychloroquine, the drug that's been talked about a lot, uh, has bench theoretical uh, research to suggest it may be effective. There's certainly nothing compelling to suggest that it's a drug that's going to be a miracle, nothing that says it alone will turn the tide. I've seen patients on hydroxychloroquine. Most of my patients with COVID-19 have been on hydroxychloroquine. And while I know there are stories out there that talk about it as a game-changing miracle drug, that has not been my experience. We don't have clinical equipoise right now. We need data, we need clinical trials, and we need to move forward in the evidence-based paradigm that's defined medicine for the past several decades. Uh, professionally, what is it, we know about professionally, what has all this done to you personally? You know, I, I'm fortunate enough to have had some tremendous training, both at the Naval Academy, in the Navy, and at medical school and in residency. I've seen a lot of things as an emergency physician, certainly nothing like what I see now. Uh, but, you know, there's bad stuff out there. I don't know what to tell you. There's people dying and there's people dying uh, that blow you away. Um, but I keep returning back to what I see healthcare providers, critical infrastructure workers everywhere doing. And I think it provides a, not a balance, but at least a, a way to look toward the positive. In mid-March, you wrote an online piece for Emergency Medicine News saying you're scared of getting it and you expected to get it. Why? Uh, we're, we're in it, Larry. I mean, we are exposed to patient after patient with the disease and we can do everything that we know with personal protective equipment. But when it comes down to it, it's hard to be 100% perfect. When you're on hour 12 of a 12-hour shift, and you're sweating because you're putting in another central line or intubating another patient, there are gonna be slips, there's gonna be movement of PPE, but you're gonna do everything you can to protect your patient. And every year I get the flu, every year I get another virus from another uh, child in my emergency department, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is gonna to happen to me as well. Your wife is a doctor, right? My wife's an OBGYN, uh, sees patients every day just like me, um, she sees them at what would typically be the happiest time of their life. Um, and certainly it's a, it's a different time for her right now as well. I know there's been a call for doctors around the country to help out in this. If you're OBGYN or a pediatrician, come help. Do you agree with that? 
I think that doctors have a baseline training and a baseline knowledge that can be extremely helpful across the spectrum of disease. That being said, there are specialists, intensivists, internal medicine doctors, emergency physicians who have specialized training and specialized experience in critical illness, and that's important as well. The fight is everywhere, and we need people at every point of that fight, uh, and we'll get them. Do you think we'll ever shake hands again? We will. I, I'm hopeful for what's to come. I, I, I see a lot. I work both in emergency medicine and in public health. I see the front lines as well as the rear guard. And when I look at the data, I do see us emerging from this dark hole. I see us uh, emerging to some sense of normalcy again. Uh, we're going to learn a lot of lessons. I think it will fundamentally change our way of life, but I don't think it'll fundamentally change who we are. So you are confident then we will get through this? We will. We get through a lot. We've been through a lot as a nation, as a world. We've been through a lot and we'll get through this. I have all the confidence in the world that our industrial might, our pharmaceutical research and development and the incredible efforts of our healthcare professionals will succeed. Um, and I think I know that we're beginning to see that tide turn. Well, finally, what confounds you the most about this virus? This virus acts like none other. We see typically respiratory viruses that respond as respiratory viruses. They impact the lungs, maybe the heart. The patients that I've seen in the hospital have had life-threatening respiratory disease. They've had heart failure and myocarditis. They've had liver failure, kidney failure. They've had evidence of insult to the brain. They have physiology that's not responding to things that we typically employ in similar situations. And that is what has started us a little bit behind the eight ball in taking care of these patients. But every single day we learn more. We have new paradigms of pathophysiology, new ideas in treatment, and we employ them. We use what we know from medical school. We use what we know from years and years taking care of patients and synthesize it with what we're seeing now. And we are truly beginning to see patients discharged from the hospital. Patients discharged who are recovered, who are able to donate blood for uh, additional treatments. And using all that and seeing all that, um, I, I'm very confident that we're going to uh, begin to emerge from this. Dr. Rick Pescator, thanks so much. Wonderful talk. Thanks, Larry. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir.